Hello and welcome to Brand Disruptors. I am Mia Lamott, your host, and I want to welcome my friend Heather Hubbard today. Heather, tell the folks a little bit about you and what you're up to. Thanks for having me on, Mia. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm Heather Hubbard, and I am a former attorney. I left, I, I was an entertainment attorney for over a decade. I was in one of those really big law firms doing that fancy pants corporate thing. And I left about five years to start my own company. And I work with, you know, high level professionals and entrepreneurs up to really, really big things. So some people call, call me a coach, but I really consider myself more of a strategist and a matchmaker and a connector. Um, so I mostly lead events, retreats, and high-end masterminds. That's that's my world. Yes. Speaking of, like, I had the opportunity of attending a summer camp that Heather put on uh, last week. And can I tell you, it was absolutely amazing. I don't know how you pulled it off. And everybody, everybody who attended was like, this was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. Like it was yeah, amazing. It was incredible. And the feet, yeah, I mean, people showed up and they stayed and not just stayed, but they were just like, what am I experiencing? Yeah, I think, I think the fact that you didn't give us all of the clues ahead of time did lead to a lot of the adventure and, and people wanted to see what was going to happen next, right? Yeah. Well, that's very on brand for me. I know we're going to kind of talk branding, but that's very on brand for me. It drives some people crazy, but it really is. That is very, if you're, if you come into a Heather Hubbard experience, it is going to be asked of you to keep an open mind and not really know what's coming next. Because I think that that's where some of the best transformation comes from is not knowing what is right in front of you. Um, yeah, so that's very on brand. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of, let's talk. Let's talk branding for a second. Yeah. Tell the audience, like, what is your mantra? Yeah. You know, the interesting thing is, I had a, a a podcast for a really long time that I just shut it down last month to start another one, and it it was hustle and flow, and that has been my mantra for, I mean, so long, and that's why I named the podcast that. It really is hustle and flow. So. Um, you know, I am so dang driven and ambitious and hungry, and I'm unapologetic about that. Um, but I also learned um, how important it is, right, to have flow. There were so many years when I did not have flow. And now really having that flow. So I'm very, um, you know, I, I'm very spiritual. I, every morning I'm going to meditate and I'm going to journal. I'm going to pull a tarot card. I'm going to be in that space. So it really, it's hustle and flow. It's right brain, left brain. It's just always being in that state of being in the moment while also like really looking ahead and pushing for the life that you want. Oh, I love that. That's so awesome. And then we're going to talk about how, why you shut that down and what you're going to be doing next. I want to hear all about it. Yeah. Um, what three words would you use to describe yourself or your brand? Bold. Mm -hmm. Courageous. And I was going to say confident. Um, I'll say brilliant. That's actually, that's the motto for the 2020 experience, but it actually, bold, brave, brilliant is the motto for the 2020 experience. But in many ways, I think it actually describes, um, my brand. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are your brand, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell me, what is your least favorite mode of communication? A text messaging. I hate it. And which is crazy because that's what everyone loves. And I hate it. I think it's because my fingers are big and it's just, I'm always like, give me a, like, give me a keyboard. If I have to type, I want a keyboard. Ah, I see. I see. All right. So tell me your outfit that makes you feel like a total badass. Okay. So my favorite outfit at the moment, well, I love jumpsuits. I love jumpsuits. And you saw me at summer camp wearing my green jumpsuit. And so for the longest time, I always felt like you can only, like if you're on stage, you can only wear one outfit once. And I've actually just embraced, no, like this is my outfit. It makes me feel like a badass when I'm wearing it. 
I can move in it and it's like my signature green color. I love the cut on it. And I'm like, no, I'm just, every time I get on stage and give this keynote, I'm wearing it. I don't even care. I love that. I love that. So what would we not catch you in? Like, what would you never wear? What would I never wear? Um, probably lots of things. I'm actually really picky. Um, but uh, you're never going to see me in, and like, I don't even know the right word for this, Mia. Um, is it called empire? It's like basically um, anything that, right, like it's going to just flare out. Yeah. Well, well that could be a that. line or it could be the, the empire waist. It does that too. That's what, yeah, like you're not going to see me in anything like that. You're not going to be wearing anything kind of flowy. So here's the thing, like, you know, I, for me, my body shape, I'm small up top, but I have a small waist and then I've got big hips and thighs. And I like actually accentuating the curves and the like in my waist and hips. And um, when I wear clothes, right, like that are like real baggy up top or it like, it just takes all that away. And I'm like, Meh. yeah, what's the point, right? <laughs> no fun, not for me. Yeah, I agree. Like I definitely love to wear clothes that, that actually follow the lines in my body instead of the ones that kind of like take away from it. Yeah. 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 All right. So what are your brand colors and why did you choose them? So my brand colors, so green, green, but green is my favorite color and it's always been my favorite color. And it's interesting. Um, I, you know, growing up, this is so funny. Uh, the stories that we have and keep with us for so long is crazy. Gr I always wanted growing up uh, like a really bright green or like hunter green. Like I, that, those were the colors I wanted all over my room. And, you know, late seventies, early eighties, that was not the right color. And so my mom would make me always have like these aqua greens. And I was like, I don't like aqua green. Um, and so it was so funny. Like I didn't have a lot of that. And then I dyed my hair red back in like 2016, which I also always wanted as a child. And I was told like, you can't do that. And I was like, I'm dying my hair red, which feels like the most authentic thing ever. And the green just goes with it. It is so who I am and I just embraced it. So it's the green. And then we also have some gold, goldish yellow. Um, and, uh, you know, I actually worked with someone on those colors. I can't say that the golden yellow I feel strongly about, and I know there was a reason behind it, but I'm not going to lie and try to make up what it was. I don't remember. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's it. So that's the, it. the green is really your, your thing though. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The older I get, the more I try to embrace who I really am mm -hmm. yeah. and the way I want to present myself. Yeah. And so it's like, mm. someone was like, what's the psychology behind green? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't really care. I love it. And I wear it ever like I wear it all the time. And so when I go to events, um, and I'm not always wearing that same jumpsuit, but when I go to events or people see me out, they're like, of course you're wearing your green. And so like, I love that people associate that with me. They're like, it's your green. I'm like, yes, it is my green. Wow. Um, yeah. And the green and the red are opposite each other on the color wheel, which is why they go together. Right. Which is mm. why Christmas. And, um, that's why it goes so well with your red hair. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's get to it. Tell let's me what, what made you shut down the podcast? Like, what is this disruption all about, Heather? Yes. So I have had on a post-it note, I can see it here. You guys cannot. I've had this note that said simple courage for years. And it was a concept to me and something that I was working on in my own life. And I was like, oh, that would be such a great book that would be such a great keynote. I should really talk about that stuff one day, one day, you know, when the audience is big enough, when I've got like, you know, enough established financially, one day I'll get to that thing uh, that I really want to talk about. And it's been up there forever. And I finally, last year, Last year, I embraced the keynote and I started working on it. I spent an entire year on it, uh, the Simple Courage keynote. You saw it um, at summer camp. It's Which was there. amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now I'm like really going all in. And so I want to do the book. And when COVID happened, anytime I, you know, I'm constantly looking at, am I aligned? Am I aligned? Am I aligned? But when COVID happened and we were having to shift so many of our things in our programs, I was just like, 
do we want to do the obvious pivot pivot just because we can or do we want to take a moment to say are we fully aligned and do we want to take a moment to say what are the opportunities and where can we really push boundaries and there was just a part of me that was like simple courage is what it is and the reason i'm not doing it is because i'm afraid right like if i'm being honest it's because i'm afraid and i think it has to be done in a certain way and and I was like, what if we just challenged all of that? What if we challenged all of that? And I think we all need it more than ever right now. And so I was like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shut down hustle and flow because so many people come to me, they have the last few years because they want coaching or handholding, which I can do, but honestly is my zone of excellence, not my zone of genius. Um, and I was like, why do people keep coming to me who you know are wanting like this hand holding and i was like well it's because i've got a podcast where i'm giving a gazillion tips on like how i could hold your hand <laughs> and i was like you know what what would happen and it's like right it's so successful it's got all these subscribers i was like what if we shut it down and forget the book like you can still do it but like why not just do a podcast like if you've got a message to share why not put it out on a podcast because we build it up, right? Yeah. And and that like really, it was like, why not Heather? And I was like, oh, I don't know. These are the, this was a conversation with myself. And um, I was like, yeah, yes. And so I told my podcast producer, I was like, we're gonna shut hustle and flow down and we're gonna do simple courage instead. And he was like, well, let's just rename it so we can keep your subscribers. I'm like, no, we're gonna be bold. We're gonna be brave. We are- we start all over. It's two different things. And which is really scary, but you know, I've done that once before. I left the legal career. You take something that is lucrative, it is working well, and you say, and yet this is not where my heart is aligned and I'm gonna go do what I really wanna do. Um, and I'm gonna trust that journey. So, but it's, I mean, it's scary, right? You've been through yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, cause you had to do that too with summer camp. Right. I remember talking to you. I think it was either January or February. You were like, oh, we're going to be doing a summer camp thing. It's going to be in Austin. It's going to be a Miraval. I want you to come, like, come hang out. Let's do this thing. And I'm like, hell yes. And then you were like, oh, we're going to do it, but it's going to be virtual, but I'm going to be there. Like, how did you even get to that? You know, the interesting thing is, so, you know, you're on the expert roster for our 2020 experience uh, people who are amazing, um, but they really, a lot of them were really taken out by COVID, not literally, but figuratively, like it just messed with their minds. And I saw them all pulling back and shrinking and saying like, well, all of my plans for 2020 are over. And they were so sad that we weren't going to be at Miraval with, you know, that. And so it started from a place of how am I going to serve them, right? Like, how am I going to serve them? And it goes back to the, all right, are we just going to do the obvious pivot? And I was meeting with my team and I was like, well, we have to lead by example. So this, this experience was about going bigger than they've ever gone before and facing their fears in a way they've never faced before. I said, so if we're not leading by example, we can't ask them to step up. So I was like, all right, how big can we go? How scared can we be? And um, I didn't have the answer at that point, but I then told my team, I was like, all right, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to take a month off, right? Like I'm gonna shut down all the revenue streams except this mastermind. I'm gonna take a month off. I'm gonna get in my creative space. I'll come back and let y'all know what I come up with. And of course I come back and I'm like, and we're gonna do summer camp and then we're gonna do limited edition masterminds. And they're just like, and we're doing it, we're doing, we're doing what and when and how? And uh, we, we somehow pulled it off, but that's, that's how it came about, um, was really just being in that place of, if, if I had a, a blank page, and if I am truly trying to show up for these women in the way I'm asking them to show up, what does that look like? And that's what it looks like for, for me. Oh my God, it was like, and you could tell that all of that care went into it because as you were demonstrating for us, right? Like I'm showing up, I'm doing this really big thing and it's super, super scary, but look, I survived it. <laughs> and actually I thrived during it because I mean, the speech, the, the keynote, 
phenomenal. Like, I think everybody was might have been in tears. Like, we totally felt that. Vaughn and I were texting each other the whole time, and we were like, "This woman is amazing." And <laughs> it was, it was, it was one of those because you were so vulnerable and sharing your story. I was like, "Okay, what can I do now?" And that's why I was like, "All right, I want to have her on the podcast. I want us to do this the second part of the series." I've even written a newsletter about your summer camp, just oh. so you. I love it. <laughs> well, so someone texted me the, and this is why, and this is why the message needs to get out there. And it's also why you, you heard it, right? So it is vulnerable. It's also why it's like, it's nice to have on a post-it and not actually have to say it out loud to the world. But someone texted me and said, you know, I was having a conversation with a high school friend and he said something that made me feel very uncomfortable. And normally I would have just let it slide. She goes, and I was drinking out of my simple courage cup. And I was thinking back to the keynote. She goes, and I said something. And that is what it's about. That yes. is what it's about. Yes. Oh, my God. I love that. I love that. So one of the reasons why I wanted to attend and got the VIP ticket was because I'm also coordinating some kind of event next year that might that is going to be hybrid, right? So I was like, all right, I need to see all of the things and see how she did it. But basically what made it a success, Heather, right was that it was the vulnerability it was the the innovation that you put into it and really just like stepped out on faith and i think that that's what made it different from everybody else's experience yeah i mean here's the thing i've always considered myself as someone who creates transformational containers and i've always considered myself as someone who can take people on journeys because even though I don't tell people where I'm leading them, it's very, very intentional. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of shaking things up. And so I knew we could still take people on a journey. And I literally thought through every single moment and what do I think people need and what have they not seen and what can we test and what can we play with? And I would move it around and move it around and move it around until I got it where, you know, I really thought it should be. And the interesting thing with that, because it's so, in, I mean, right, like there's no other word for it other than it's just interesting how we hold ourselves back. Oh, yeah. That I've always had that gift and I've always had that ability, but I often would hide behind like the whole coaching or the people need the practical tips or they, and I can do all that stuff, right? Like I can do it all day long, but my true genius is creating those experiences and those containers which are sometimes hard to sell um, because they're a bit amorphous, you know, and it's, and I've always had that issue. Like even when I leave retreats, people, I couldn't always describe what it was. And then people would come in and be like, that just changed my life. And I would be like, can you describe your experience? Like try to get a testimonial. And they'd be like, I don't know how to describe that. Right. Like it's every, it's like, I'm like, how do you capture that? Like from, from a business strategy perspective, that's not clear communication. Yeah. But I'm starting to embrace that, okay, maybe that's, maybe I don't have to have that piece. Would it be nice? Yes. But if I'm truly delivering the way I know I can, I leave people speechless. And that just is what it is. Um, and so just learning to be in that space and embrace that. And I have to say, it's scary but so much fun. So yeah, much fun. I mean, I saw one of the testimonials and I think somebody said that they were effing blown away. So I don't know why you can't use that. And I also <laughs> think that, you know, just saying, like, I can't even explain to you what I experienced it, but I know that you have to go and experience it yourself. Yeah. Right? That's, I mean, that's what it was. It is like, I'm so interested to see what we're all going to be talking about when we do talk about our experience at summer camp, just because like, I know what my takeaways were, but I know that when I left there, I did feel transformed and I've been to lots of transformational things, but right. to, to feel lighter, like you get inspired and you, you know, but I had committed that day. Like I was going to take like one simple one act of simple courage every day because of what you said right so that to me is the transformation yeah yeah i mean that's the thing though every because it's interesting i never walk in saying i want this person to have this this particular outcome or this particular transformation 
I trust that they're there for whatever reason they need to be there. I trust that they're going to get out of it whatever they need out of it. And when I create those magical journeys, it is so layered that I know, like, they're, like no one's going to get every layer. But you're, it's gonna, you're gonna be hard pressed to come in and not get one layer. Yeah. And to me, that's where the magic comes from. And with like the archetypes, uh, you know, alchemy is one of mine and that's what it is, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of that mystical, magical alchemist, like you're gonna be transformed. And it's like, <laughs> how, like in what way? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, you just gotta come and find out. <laughs> right, it's your journey, it's your experience. like the transformation will happen. You just got to be present to it, right? Right. Yeah. You just got to be in the room. I know that's what I, that's what I tell people and they just look at me and they're like, what? And I'm like, you just got to be in the room. I can't tell you what yours will be. Um, but I know I create these containers and these journeys that, you know, well, I literally have people who they would, I'm trying to think like back in 2016, mm-hmm. I had people who they were like, they would see an Instagram ad or a Facebook ad. They didn't know me from Adam. And they would be like, I just feel like I'm supposed to be here. And so they would literally spend like $5,000, get on a plane, show up not knowing me or anyone else. And they'd be like, I don't know why I'm here. I got an ad. I never do things like this, but I just feel as though I'm supposed to be here. And I'm like, perfect. I agree. I I, like, I believe that everything's connected and, you know, divine. And then they'll have their transformational moment. And they they literally, I I won't hear from them again. And years later, they're like that, uh, like that retreat or that event changed my life and the trajectory of my life in ways that like, I am still like, it's still because like, I'm still learning from it. And um, like, that's just right. Like that's, it's, it's gold. You can't ask for a better testimonial than that. I mean, it's something that, you know, for to to have that kind of effect on someone where year after year after year, they're still feeling the effects of one event. Yeah. I that's mean, those layers. And that's not, I mean, you know, I don't want to get too woo, but like, I'm just like, but that's not me. Right? Like, I mean, I was just, I was a portal. I was a messenger. Um, there's just so much more at play, right? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so tell us about this, the transition. So you have the 2020 experience limited edition now. Tell me about that. Yes, so this is a crazy thing, right? Like I had all of my workshop events around business development, the marketing and the sales, because that's what people want from me. Um, and, you know, and goals and planning. And we had, you know, the get it done, all of that. And I literally shut all of that down. Yeah. I said, we're shutting all of it down. And uh, we're just going to do simple courage both with the keynotes and that so that's gonna we're we're gonna have two brands so that will be a brand and then i'm going all in on mastermind experiences and so i'm really just going to be in the moment of what experience do i want to create next and the experience that i wanted to create for the rest of the year Mm -hmm. was really for the woman or man although it's mostly women, you experience this, right? Like we have all, like the vast majority are female leaders. Uh, so not all men are brave enough to walk in that room, but we had some and they were awesome. Um, so I was like, I want to create this mastermind where people can come in at a super high level and have like real conversations and real connections. Um, I mean, I lead masterminds and I've been in a ton and I just feel like there's so much posturing And there is just so much just, you know, fake bravado and the, uh, so there's that going on. And then I also feel like there is a lot of, like a lot of the masterminds, you have people come in and it's almost like a webinar that it's a monologue. They're talking to you. Um, and you just get to a certain level where you're like, I don't need that. Like, I don't need more training. What I need is access to people who know others or have resources to things that I don't know. Um, And I want to be surrounded by people who inspire me and challenge me and push me. And I, I want to be in a space of just taking action and being, you know, really just innovative. And so I was like, okay, well, what does that look like? So same thing with summer camp, right? Like, what does that look like? And what does that journey look like? And of course, there's like, I, 
like I know all the transformational pieces that are even behind it <laughs> and all the magical moments that like you that aren't part of like the pitch at all. Right. Um, but but yeah, so it, we've got three different parts to it. One is having a super, like it's very highly curated. The people who are together, it's like only three to four people that they all have expertise knowledge that where they can help the other person um to really navigate so it's a bit like it's a bit matchmaker um and then a third of it is these round tables where we're gonna dive deep into conversations and they're being facilitated by like amazing people right like who have written best-selling books and things like that and then we're having activity q a so like our very first one is with manit shohan who is a celebrity chef she's on the food network she's got cookbooks she has her like restaurant empire and so we're going to cook with her for 30 minutes getting creative you know getting that creative space and then we're diving deep into questions and like it's opened up to the whole group and it's still it's still super intimate because I don't think we'll have more than 40 people in the group. It's going to be somewhere between 20 and 40. And so real intimate access to people that like are doing amazing things that we want, right? Like, so it's like, they've got Grammy awards, they've got television deals, they've got book deals, they've got all these things. And it's where we want to be, even if it's not our industry, yeah. right? It, it inspires us. And so um, that's what that mastermind is about. Like, it's really about like, forget the way the industry does it, forget the way these tiny little niches do it. Like we're creating what we need in this moment. And, you know, but even that's innovative because, you know, I literally went to people and was saying like, hey, I wanna do this. And they're like, what? They're like, no one's ever approached us to do this. And I'm like, well, I'm approaching you. And they're like, well, what do people, what do people charge for that? And I'm like, I don't know, it's brand new. Well, what do you wanna, like, give me a, give me a quote. Let's, let's talk money. And it's just so interesting. They're like, yeah. And that's what I love about high level entrepreneurs like that. They're always game. Not a single person told me no. They were all like, this is awesome. Let's talk yeah. about this. Yeah. So um, yeah, we're going to be, it's, we're going to be meeting the rest of the year. I'm actually participating in a pod myself. Um, oh, that's super cool. Yeah. Because I mean, this is the thing. Anytime I create things, I don't know about you. Like I also create what I need. I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I'm going through my own course right now. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's what I need. I need, I want to be inspired. I want access to people I normally wouldn't have access to. And I want to be deep in the trenches with conversations and women and men who don't want to do surface level. Like we're over surface level, right? Like we're ready to have the real conversations that are going to help us grow personally and professionally. Yeah, I'm having a conversation with a lot of people um, because I think that that's exactly why we're in this space that we're in because surface is over. Everybody needs to go deeper. And then the people who aren't ready to do all of that, Heather, like, they're just going to be left behind, really. Yeah. I mean, that's my theory. Like, it'll be so interesting to see, like, because I'm, I just know that, like, so similar thing, like, you're not going to be able to walk into that mastermind the same person who leaves that mastermind and i just experienced more growth in the last six to eight weeks like personal right like the personal and professional like really putting myself out there growth yeah. than i would have in like an entire year had COVID not happened and that like that's the space i'm creating it's the how bold how brave can we be um and i can't wait to see what actually happens and what comes from that because um, it's going to be badass. Me either. I can't wait to see it either. Okay. Anything else that you need the audience to know about or that you want to talk about today that's, you know, like what else, what's next? Like, I know you don't even know yet, right? You're still creating yeah. these things. Yeah. Well, so Simple Courage, the podcast will be coming out and i um, I will already tell you, so I'm already talking to, you know, I've always got, there's a million things going on up here. Um, I've already been talking to um, my my podcast producer and I've, I'm literally like saying like, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And he's like, I've never seen anyone do that. I'm, I'm just in such a creative space and like trying to just challenge every 
everything that's out there, every story I've been told, every system and funnel and whatever that I'm trying to know all out the window. So just wait, it's probably going to come in October. Okay. So if you want to follow me on social media, you'll definitely know when it comes out. So it's at Heather Joy Hubbard. Um, but we're going to be turning the podcast concept on its head. I love this idea. I can't wait to see what you're doing. I can't. I know. I can't wait. Anything else? No, no. That's, I mean, not, as of now, not that I, I mean, that's enough, right? Like that, that's enough between the mastermind experience and the simple courage. Like it's, it's plenty that will keep us busy for the rest of the year. Uh, we're going to do our next virtual event, January 4th and 5th. Okay. Uh, it's going to be, it's the 2020 after party, um, which is really planning for 2021, but it's kind of a play on words and thoughts and concepts because I think this will be the, first time in a long time that it's not a good clean break Absolutely. right january one is not going to be the way january one normally feels so uh, after parties are always the best so really we're just are. tongue in cheek we're gonna we're gonna call it the after party in 2021 i love it so okay so how do they find you on instagram if they want to book you for the simple courage speaking um yeah so know. follow me on instagram or facebook at heather joy hubbard and if they are interested in the keynote, which I do virtually and presumably in person at some point again, um, they can they can find it on the website, they, which they can actually just go to simplecourage.com. Okay. And they'll get it that way. Awesome. So you you actually got that? Simplecourage.com was I amazing. bought it. I bought it. I had been following it for years and um, was, you know, they, they weren't going to give it up. And so I made, I made that investment. I made the investment and purchased, paid, paid to get it uh, back in May. Because if I'm going to go all in, I'm going to go all in. So, right. you know, it's just to me, it's like when you do things like that, it's like saying to the universe, like, okay, I'm here for it. Like, I'm legit here for it. It's no longer a post-it note. I'm legit here for it. Yes. And you are like, you're actually walking the top. You're actually taking those steps of simple courage and I'm here for it. Yeah. So excited to be a witness. Yeah. So I want to thank you for coming on today and guys, like seriously, go and follow Heather. I can't, like we said, I can't explain to you guys what actually happened at summer camp. We're going to try in the next episode. Um, but it was just one of those amazing experiences that I'll never forget. And I want to thank you for, you know, creating that. Thanks for coming and thanks for having me on the podcast. It has been such a pleasure getting to know you and thanks to Vaughn for introducing us. I know we have a, we have a client, a mutual client that introduced us earlier this year. So that's how this happened. People like you just got to get out there and do your thing. Yes. Do yourself. Right. Yes. Have that simple courage. Yes. Bye guys.